Welcome back everybody. Today we're talking about my Zenith 750 Cruiser. I finished up phase one flight testing a couple months ago and since then I've flown it around to a few airports and a Zenith fly-in. I've gotten quite a bit of attention and a lot of questions. The number one question, how long did it take to build? I attended the Zenith workshop in January of 2021 and picked up the first parts of the kit and took them home then and in August of 2022, it was at the airport assembled doing some taxi testing. So just over 18 months. Other builders typically seem a little shocked when I say I finished it in 18 months. I had one builder comment that I must have been unemployed because it took him over two years and he was fully retired at the time. Uh, he was joking, but I worked full time during the entire build. The EAA claims that 80% of aircraft kits aren't finished by the original purchaser which is kind of a staggering statistic. And if you look through Barnstormers, Craigslist, or Facebook Marketplace, you'll see plenty of unfinished projects, which kind of supports this theory. So I've had a lot of people ask, you know, what's your secret? How did you do it so quickly? What's it take? There really aren't any secrets, but I'll go through what I consider five big factors, if you will, that you should consider that can make or break a project of this scale. The first factor you should consider is time, and it may seem pretty obvious considering we're talking about how you can build an airplane quickly, but you know we all have plenty of demands on our time these days, and building an airplane is a large demand time-wise. I didn't keep an exact hour-by-hour -hour log of my build, I opted instead for photos, but I will tell you I worked on it almost every day, and at least one day on the weekend. I wasn't in a rush, but I knew every bit of steady work added up, and I enjoyed the build process. As I mentioned earlier, it took about 18 months to build. Uh, this was not a quick build kit, and there was no professional assistance. So it was me and some occasional help from my wife, working two to three hours in an evening and at least eight hours on a weekend. It's a big time commitment, but it didn't consume my life. I still spent time with friends and family, I still traveled, and I still worked on other projects. That said, I've never seen an episode of The Walking Dead, or Game of Thrones, or Breaking Bad, or Yellowstone, or any of these big popular shows. My only point here is that you have to decide how you want to spend your time. I'd rather spend mine building cool stuff. Now if you're short on time, or you want to get done even quicker, uh, there's a few ways you can do that. So number one, you can purchase a quick build kit from Zenith, and this will save you at least a month or so on assembly. Or you can get some professional assistance. So there's professional build centers out there that will assist you in getting your kit airplane put together and put together quickly. But if you go for one of these options, it's going to cost you some money, which is the second big factor we're going to talk about. It's probably not going to come as a surprise, but there's some big checks you're going to have to write. No way around it. And if you're building on a budget, anything you can trim down that number means you will get the airplane done quicker. So here's a few tips on how I was able to save some money. So number one, if you're close enough to the Zenith factory, go pick up the kit yourself. You'll save a bunch of money on crating and shipping. The entire airplane kit will fit in a 6x12 U-Haul trailer. So if you have a half-ton pickup or a large SUV, you can drive up there with the trailer. They will load it in the trailer for you, and you can bring it home, saving a bunch of money. Zenith also sells the kit in chunks, if you will, called component kits. These are helpful from a financial standpoint because you can buy them as you need them, which spreads out the cost. I started with the airframe controls and tail kit and didn't pick up the wings for another year. If you live in Seattle, this is probably not the best plan, but if you're close enough to pick up the kit yourself, this can be really helpful. One really obvious technique is to shop for deals. The secret to this is to be ready to buy during and around Oshkosh, as many manufacturers will offer discounts based around the show. You don't even have to attend the show to take advantage of these deals, just call and ask or look on their website. The other method to save some money is to do some additional DIY. Yoke grips is a great example. I used two tube caps from McMaster Car, some switches, and some universal motorcycle grips from eBay. Total cost $20 for the pair versus $140 for the pair for Ray Allen grips, which is probably the most popular grip in the experimental aircraft community. Upholstery is another area. I see guys buying upholstery kits for $700 or $1,000. My wife enlisted the help of a friend, and with a very basic sewing machine, they threw together these seats for mine, less than $200 worth of materials from the local fabric store and you see what you get here. Because it's experimental, you can use alternatives that you can't use in the certified world. So my panel lights are nothing more than LED license plate bolts for a motorcycle or a custom car, $3 each, and they work great. When it comes to things in the firewall forward, uh, the Corvair engine I'm using, I assembled myself, I built my own headers, built my own cooling baffles, built my own cowl. This saved a bunch of money, but it also cost a bunch of time. So 
depending on what you have more of, you can trade time and money pretty extensively throughout the airplane project. Paint's another area I get a lot of questions about. I did polish the main center section, but the wings, nose, and tail are all painted with Summit Racing Hot Rod Series Satin Black. Single stage, easy to use, painted it myself. I wasn't going to pay $15 plus thousand dollars to get my airplane painted. The next factor I want to talk about is space. And I'm not just talking about having enough space to work. Having more space to work and be organized definitely does help, but what's more important than that is the space between you and the project. Given the choice between building an airplane in a two-car garage at home or building in a hangar 15 minutes away, I would choose the two-car garage every single time. If you only have one hour every evening to work on the plane, well, that 15 minutes to the hangar and 15 minutes back, that eats up half of your time. If you only have 30 minutes, you can't work on the plane at all because you can't get there and back in time. If you're building the plane at home, you can go out and deburr for 30 minutes. Believe me, there's plenty of deburring, you know, riveting, pulling wires, etc. You can do lots of stuff in 30 minute chunks if it's at home. If you can eliminate the travel time, that gives you more time to work on the project, which as we said before, will make the project get done sooner. And if you save money on travel time and hangar rent, that's more money for the project, which as we said before, makes it get done sooner. Next, I want to talk about simplicity, and we'll use the example of a landing light. The Cessna you probably learned to fly in might have had two landing lights, and so you might be tempted to say, oh, I need two landing lights also. So why do Cessnas have two? Well, with the landing light out on the wing and a GE 4509 bulb, beam pattern is terrible, and the lights don't last very long. They last maybe 10 hours. But with a modern LED landing light, it draws less power, stays cooler, has uh, thousands of hours of life, and the beam pattern is such that it works well for both landing and a taxi light. So you don't need two of them. But it's easy to get tempted. You know, look on the internet and you'll see dual landing light setups, one in each wing with a wigwag controller that allegedly scares off birds, but I'm really skeptical of that. If you know of an actual study with quantitative data that shows that wigwag landing lights scare off birds or the FAA or whatever, Post it in the comments below. I want to see it. I'll take the Pepsi challenge. A single landing light costs less, weighs less, easier to install, takes less time. There's really no downside. Since we're on the topic of wiring, circuit protection is another great example. Over the past several years, electronic circuit protections with solid state electronics have become really popular. But $2,000? Is that $2,000 for your project well spent? Even the standard aircraft circuit breakers that are resettable can add up to almost $500 and take a bunch of time to install. This Eaton Busman panel mounted fuse block has three different buses, so I have a main, battery, and an endurance bus all in one unit. And this cost all of $40, was far easier to install, is lighter, and all around there's no downside to it. Now if you have retractable gear, sure you might want resettable circuit breakers. But otherwise, fuses work just fine. Simplifying takes some serious self-reflection and being honest with yourself and the use of the aircraft. Do you really need passenger brakes? Do you need passenger engine controls? Both of them add cost, time, and weight to the airplane. I have neither. Do you need dual sticks? The Zenith center yoke is far lighter and simpler to install than dual sticks. Now I didn't take simplicity to an extreme and build an airplane with no electrical system that had to be hand propped, etc. I do have a single Grand Rapids glass panel and engine information system, and I actually do have an autopilot. Could I have gone with steam gauges and been simpler and cheaper? Eh, maybe. I priced out steam gauges, and they came out to be the same price as the glass panel, and the glass panel has additional capabilities, and in my opinion, the glass panel is easier to install. So that's the way I went. And the autopilot? I wanted it. But notice I said single panel, not dual panel with three radios and complete IFR system. Honestly, just keep it simple. All right, so now that we've covered four of the five, let's talk about the fifth and the most important factor in finishing an airplane and finishing it quickly, and that is determination. You can call that drive, motivation, attitude, passion, whatever. This is the internal desire to push forward and work on the plane. Money and time can be substituted for one another, and you can get around simplicity with time and money as well, but there's no substitute for having drive. 
and determination is why you're spending so much time and so much money on building a plane in the first place. If you want to learn a lot about aircraft systems and truly be the master of your own machine, then building is the right path. But you have to be able to continue alone if needed. If you start the project with a build partner and they abandon you, can you carry the torch by yourself? If you start with a build club, same thing. If you're the only one ever working on it, can you move forward by yourself? My shop has no insulation and I wouldn't even consider it climate control with fans and a diesel powered salamander heater. So I was out there when it was 30 degrees and I worked on it when it was 110. My wife helped me with several things, but mostly it was just me in the shop cranking away. Every aircraft build is somewhat unique. There are things that have to be figured out and you have to be willing to accept the challenge to solve the puzzle. The good news is you're not alone. William Wynn at Fly Corvair, Jeff at Grand Rapids Technology, and Roger at Zenith Air were all extremely helpful working through the puzzle. Time, money, and determination make up the trifecta. I don't know anyone who has built a plane who would disagree. If you have some factors that you can think of that helped you with your build or other builds, post in the comments below. Let's talk about them. I want, I'm interested to see what other people think. But anyway, hope this is helpful to all of you current and future builders. And if you have any other tricks or tips, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.